Hear that? Believe it or not, summer is just around the corner. Luckily, Armorall, America's most trusted auto appearance brand, has what your car needs to get that perfect summer shine. Plus, now through May 31st, we'll give you $5 for every $20 you spend on Armorall products. That means car wash pods, protectant, tire shine, you name it. Find out how to get your $5 rebate at Armorall.com. Armorall, less work, more clean. Terms apply. Hey there. Did you know Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Kroger app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Kroger today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. I told him, pull up your big boy pants and tell me who owns the car. He decided to tell me to get out of his bar and don't come back in it, which I did. This is the plaintiff, Trudy Smith. She says she's suing the defendant, a bar owner near where she lives, for damages because a drunk driver plowed into her car while it was parked. That's right, as a bar owner, the defendant has a right and a moral duty not to over-serve his patrons so they can drive home safely. She did her due diligence, knows she has a rock-solid case, and is suing for $5,000 for her totaled car. This is the defendant, Jeffrey. He says this whole lawsuit's just plain irrational because the plaintiff has no idea who hit her car in the middle of the night. The plaintiff has no proof of anything, just saw a bar near where she lives and is trying to extort him. He's accused of vehicular damages. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated, come to work. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Okay. Trudy Smith and Salvador Sanchez. Um, yes. That's your son? Yes. He's how old? He's 21. Okay. And you have power of attorney to represent that's him here correct. today? Is the car under your name or his? We're the both of us. Both of you. Okay. You are suing the bar behind your building, represented correct. here by Jeffrey. You've asked to be referred to only by your first name. And the glasses are medical? Yes. You okay? Yes. Okay. Um, for $5,000 that you say you are due as a result of, let's call it dram shop violation. Yes. Okay. You are under the impression that their customers, one of their customers, hit your son's car. Okay, Absolutely. talk to me and tell me what I, happened. I just want to show you the display so you get a visual okay. of everything. Okay, and anybody who goes to the trouble of a display, I will get off the bench and go look at it. I appreciate it. Um, this is the uh, road that we live on. That's my building there. And this is the parking lot. See? Wait, what's the park? This, this row of this, cars is parked where? In front of my building. This is where and I that live. Belong just a moment. Does that belong to your building? This, this lot does not belong to my building. It belongs to whoever owns this um, building here. But this is, is that where, where the defendant's bar is? Yes, all the way at the end of the lot. Okay. Um, and then, basically, as you can see, there's plenty of cars outside here. And that's where everybody that lives here parks their cars down here. And the first time that we had the accident, what happened was on November 14th, um, my son came home around 11 o'clock, went to bed. I got up the next morning. I came outside, and I discovered the first car totaled. This is the first car. I don't know if you can see it from there. Nope, he's gonna take And I called the police. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. A wait witness wait a minute, came. Wait a minute, hold on, hold okay. on. Is this a picture of your, of the your car? Your car. car? That's the, sec the second car? The second car. Okay. If you see on the bottom, the valance was damaged, and that's where it was hit in the rear wow. on the second time. Um, Wait, but keep this going is to the, the second end. time? This is, the, this is the second car still. Just keep sliding. Where's the first car? Slide all the way to keep sliding. 
right there. That's the first car? That's my first car. Good Lord. Tell me about it. I was devastated. And the car, oh, that's a that's a good picture right there. Yeah. I so was, that car was clearly hit from behind, shoved clearly, right into the concrete. Clearly hit from behind. And as I, Where's I, the parking for your building? There is really any, none. Uh, if you could see. So where are people in your building supposed to park? I've always parked there. I've been living there for two years. No, I've I, never know, had I know I know what you've problems, always done. My question is where where does the building right tell here, you? I'll just a minute. You. I'm, I'm in the middle of a question. Hold on. Where does the building tell you to park? They tell me I, I can park anywhere. Is there street parking? No, no. I'm just kind of... Uh, so this is... Uh, this is okay. Kind of your poor son who walks out to the car and sees this. That's I, awful. It was, it was awful. And what happened was um, a witness... A police came and a witness um, came down and made a statement in the police report. And when I saw the witness's statement, um, it stated it was a white Ford Mustang. I Let me see the police report. On the last page is a witness statement. I immediately, when I saw that it said white Ford Mustang, I immediately knew that it was a, a car that always, that I've always seen parked on the weekends in front of his bar. Who does the car belong to? That's what I did. I walked up to the defendant. I immediately said, who owned the Ford Mustang? He became hostile to me. Why? What did he say? He, he was like, you shouldn't be parking there. And I had my children with me. Do you drive a fo uh, white Ford Mustang? No. No, I drive does, a BMW. Does anybody else in, who works there no. drive a white Ford Mustang? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And then I went there like three days later and passed out this flyer to everybody. And I went into his bar and I was passing out the flyers because I know... In his bar? Yes, of course, because it's right where I live. And I know that I've seen that car there on numerous occasions. And it's a small town. And uh, what happened was um, he saw the flyer became irate with me. I told him, I became, my Irish temper came a little up, and I told him, pull up your big boy pants and tell me who owns the car. He decided to tell me to get out of his bar and don't come back in it, which I did. Subsequently, This you know, is great. Hold on one second. Uh, what, a, what a mama bear. Yes. Uh, Friday the 14th in, into Saturday morning at approximately 4 a.m., a witness noticed a two, 2010 to 2012 Ford Mustang white with a black top hit my car in the parking lot. At this point, all I'm looking for is a person, for this person to take ownership so that my son and I do not have to incur a loss during this holiday season. Yeah. No need for the police to be involved, just need the insurance information. That's Anybody it. with information, contact me, Trudy. Right. And a picture of the car all busted up. Right. Yeah. Because it was right before. Um, it happened because right the person before. who was hit and run would like just immediately call you. Like they probably wouldn't. But who knows? You never know what conscience can do to a person. Right. So, but it didn't work. And right. It didn't work. No. Okay. It didn't work. And then, um, and I was. I was very due diligent. I faxed it to all the body shops and tow companies in the round, surrounding area. Oh my God. Very due diligent. Don't cross it. Trudy. No. Ahead, not with it. my children. Okay. <laughs> so then, you know, we took a loss. You know, the whole holiday season was a bust. We had to get another car. And then we got another car. I helped co-sign that loan as well. And, and then, then you parked in the same spot? No. What he started doing, because he was afraid to park behind the building, was he started parking by the yellow house still in the shopping center yes yes still in the shopping center because there's no real other place well there is other place well, it's not, just not convenient no not that because okay. we've okay. always parked there yeah okay. there's no real other place to park on that street um so anyway subsequently um three months to the day my son came home from work the next morning he woke up and came running in the house he was he had to go take the baby to the doctors and found his second car which is the on the pictures again, which is the first one that's hit in the rear. If you go to the deck lid. The Volkswagen? Yes. It got plowed into the rear and pushed up on a snow embankment. And now this is the second car this that got hit. This is the second car, and, and that's, that's where, where it got, got hit, hit in the rear by a pickup yeah. truck with a uh, dolly hitch on it. You know. What time hitch. did he come out and notice that? The morning time again. How do you know that got hit by a pickup truck with a dolly hitch on it? Okay. You, wow, you have some kind of, okay. I worked in, I'm, I worked 20 years in the body shop business oh. towing, and you could tell by the height. So all those where, tow companies that say there's no way I could have created that damage, you know that it's not true. Right. Okay. And no, there's, you know, there's a lot, you know, when towing a vehicle you can damage, absolutely, if you don't do it right. Um, all right, let me hear from you. Okay. Uh, you've asked me to refer to only by your first name, Jeffrey. Right. Jeffrey. What's, uh, you don't want us to name the bar. Uh, how late is the bar open? During the week, usually one o'clock. And how about after that? On the weekends, about three. Three. And um, on the day of the first accident was what day? Friday, Friday. the 14th. Is Friday a weekend? Yes. 
Okay, so Friday and Saturday night is usually a little later. Say it again. Friday and Saturday night is usually a little later. Okay, so three or four? Well, depending on if there's customers or not. Okay, all right. So is there anything else that's open at four? I have pictures, and it's nothing personal or anything, but they park in those spots all the time. That's not their parking lot. I have pictures that say no parking on both sides coming in and out. They provide parking across the street. But they've always parked there. Because we let them because we're nice. But, well, we, but, but they've always parked there. Well, yeah, but that's just silly illegal. We let but the church park there on Sunday mornings. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, just. Okay. I, uh, all right. When she came over to me in the morning after this allegedly customer of mine hit the car, which I have no idea who could be or whatever. It doesn't matter. But no police ever came into me and asked me anything. All right. She just came over that Monday and started screaming at my customers. Somebody hit my son's car. Somebody's paying for this. She starts friending them. And they bought this and said, listen, get out. You crazy lady, go home. You live across the street, you should be parked there anyway, okay? Then I was, we have leagues, you know what I mean? Dart leagues and pool leagues and all that stuff. We're sitting there, she comes in on Wednesday, she doesn't see me sitting there, and she starts yelling at all my customers. You, 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 somebody put on your big boy pants and come pay for my kid's car. People are like, this lady's nuts. She starts handing these flyers that say that I'm responsible somehow. So I no, tell the, the, this I, flyer doesn't say you're responsible. Well, this it says doesn't. she's looking for the person, right? In yeah, my yeah. in my place, saying that somebody from our place came and did this. Mm-hmm. So I said to her, I said, "Listen, you got to go. You're disrupting the business. You know, get out." Mm-hmm. She leaves and goes back across the street where she. If you look at that, I show I, I show you a picture of the sign say no parking on both sides. That whole entire parking lot is belongs to my landlord, not hers. She should be parked to begin with. Right. If she parked in the back of her building where she was supposed to be. This, we wouldn't be here, okay? So when you take a chair, if you park in- Did you ever, did you, I just out of curiosity, was there ever, was, she claims that there was a Ford white Mustang that used to be a customer of yours all the time. Yeah. And was always out there. Was yeah. there some Ford? No. I think she's thinking of a white Camaro that's always there, which is one of my people's nephews. But he's fine, there's no, that nothing ever happened to his car. He was there two days later with the car. Okay. It's black and white, but other than that, I mean, it's three o'clock and four o'clock in the morning, whatever time she said, this guy was sitting at his window watching out at the parking lot to see this car get no, hit. No, maybe he was coming home at the yeah, same time. Yeah, well, I, she said he woke up or whatever, I think. Or whatever. Yeah, it maybe really, he woke up. It, does, it doesn't really matter. No, but, it yeah. doesn't. You know why? Yeah. Because you're not supposed to be parking there anyway. Exactly. Well, why are you parking there? And the answer cannot possibly be, because I always have. That's not an answer to, see, y- y- you presume that you have well, let's presume you presume yeah. a lot, um, right. and let's talk about all the things that you're presuming. Mm-hmm. Number one, you are presuming that the person who hit your car mm-hmm. each time came from their business. Absolutely. And that's a pretty. It might be a pretty safe presumption. You're the only business there open. But of course, we also know that everybody in your building. And that would include the people who are visiting people in your building. And there's six different apartments there, mm-hmm. all parked there too. Mm-hmm. So it's people besides his customers that are there. But let's go with that and say it's one of his customers. Mm-hmm. He's not responsible for what his customers do unless you presume the second fact that you are assuming, mm-hmm. which is that that person was incredibly drunk as opposed to just a crappy driver and not paying attention. Welcome back to The People's Court. Harvey Levin here. By the way, welcome to season 19, the premiere of The People's Court. Uh, Here's the deal. Should a bar owner be responsible uh, for a car crash if the bar owner overserves somebody in the bar and they get in a car accident? What do you think? Um, I think there might be some sort of... Should there be? Should there be? Well, he's not the one responsible for the person getting behind the okay, wheel. So you say no. I say yes. I say because? Yes because it's the bar owner's responsibility to make sure that his his um, patrons can get home safe. That's the question. Is that the bar owner's responsibility? Yes. It is. Mm-hmm. So the bar owner should be responsible. Definitely. Okay. Going inside the courtroom. People have accidents all the time. Every single one of them are not drunk. So you're assuming the person was drunk. And then for them to be responsible, you have to assume a third fact. Okay, which is that the bartender knew they were drunk and served them anyway. Mm -hmm. I have to find that you have proven all these three facts and then ignore the fact that you're illegally parked there because you have no business parking in another landlord's parking lot, even if they've allowed you to do so. You really have no business doing that. Mm -hmm. So how on earth are you going to prove this case? Well, like you said, it was open. The only he stated it was the yeah, only. But how bar. do you know that somebody was drunk and the bartender knew they were drunk? How do you know that? I don't know that. That's right. true. Right. I can say that, you know. But 
the assumption is there. That no, the assumption is not there. This is how court works. You may okay. feel that you're right, and mm -hmm. that's fine. But for you to go to court and say somebody has to pay me five grand, you have to prove by a preponderance of the evidence that you're right. And you know there are there is uh, there are a lot of missing pieces in a lot of cases, and yours, 99 percent of the pieces are missing. Okay. My verdict in this case is for the defendant. Thank you. Yeah. All right, both sides. Both sides. Well, so with that, the plaintiff's out here on the losing end of this case. Uh, too much assumption, not enough proof. Facts, right. Mm -hmm. And I, I get it. I understand now. Mm -hmm. You know, but I had to because I felt like he needed to be held accountable. And she right. saw otherwise. It is All what right, it well, is. Well, this is what you really believe happened. Absolutely. But is there any room in your head for possibly another explanation for how, what went down? No. How not do you know? How do you know for sure? Because of the um, surrounding environment. There's no other establishment there but that bar. No other person that would be serving alcohol at that time of night. The 98 percent, though? Yeah, I understand. Maybe I, they weren't drunk. You're parking in the wrong place. They you can't can, make it out of a parking lot. They have to be drunk. Are you going to park someplace else? <laughs> I'm actually moving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. So long. Thank you. All right. All right. What do you think of the outcome here in this case in general? I knew that's what was going to happen. I do know. Because she has, she said somebody, she has no idea of anything. There's no, there's nobody, she doesn't know who hit the car, when they, you know, she got in the morning, the car was hit. Just don't blame the name nearest business, <laughs> you know? We're legit. I've been there for over 20 years. We've never had any problems. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been over there several times telling them, don't park here. Yeah. You know? Don't Maybe you shouldn't here. let anybody park well, here. Well, it's not my, it's not, I don't own the building. I own the, you know, the, the business in there. They own the building. All right, Harvey. Okay, this is actually a very hot topic, Kurt, uh, among the various states. And some states say bar owners are responsible, and other states say they're not responsible. It's the job of the consumer, the customer, uh, to monitor himself or herself. Now, we'll do it for this case, litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Steven Silverberg. He says he purchased a commercial printer from the defendant on eBay, paid the man in full, but never got the printer. The guy refunded his money, all right, but he wanted the printer because he got it at a really good price. Now he's forced to go out and buy a different one for 900 bucks. So that's what he's suing for today. This is the defendant, Lewis Kaplan. He says he realized the printer was actually broken after he made the sale to the plaintiff. So he did what he thought was the right thing to do and refunded his money in full. The plaintiff began harassing him, even threatened him, which is downright crazy because he did nothing wrong. And he thinks the judge will agree. He's accused of copping out on a copier. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a commercial printer on eBay, but says it never showed up. The, the, the defendant says the printer turned out to be broken, so he refunded See, the guy's it's money. It's the case of you and your ink stain. Thank you, Douglas. You're okay, in. Stephen Silverberg. Yes. You are suing Lewis Kaplan for $900, the cost of a new printer, because according to you, he inappropriately breached a contract to sell you a printer on eBay? That's correct, Your Okay, Honor. what happened? So um, <clears throat> around February, uh, schools are soliciting for donations for auctions. So it was a snowy, typical February day, and I'm sitting, <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> it was and, and I'm a stormy, sitting, stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting home with my kids on the computer, and perusing eBay, and I had done some research. Yeah, we're not on, really with our kids when we're on the computer, but okay. That's what we like to tell that to ourselves, you know? It's, it's better <laughs> than YouTube. Ahead. They're in the proximity. Go ahead. They're in the same so, zip code. We're sitting and doing it, and I had researched this particular printer because they know that the schools, if the school ends up keeping it, it's better for the school also, so they can't lose. So either they sell it for more money and and make money and the school keeps it, or the school keeps it. Is a commercial printer? printer. It I is. mean, I, well, by commercial, it's just, it's more heavy duty? Let me explain. Um, most printers, if they're inkjets, you have to keep running back to uh, a store and replacing them, and it's $20, $30 a pop. Yeah. This, it's the ink, not the printer. Right. Yeah. It's the ink, not the printer. This is a more expensive printer. But it's, it was very highly rated, and you buy one jumbo cartridge, it's a toner, and it lasts for like 20,000 copies. Right. So this was perfect for them, or for anybody who had a business that wanted to 
Okay, raise so money. you're bidding on the item because he is advertising it. Do you have the advertisement? I do. May I see it? All right, and then what happens? So we're all excited because it's going for a better price than I can possibly get it anywhere, and everybody loves a bargain, and especially when it's going to the school. <clears throat> and we even, just to show you just how serious we were, we were foregoing skiing on a sunny day. Who's we? Me and the kids, the kids and I. Wait, were the kids? Were the, kids the kids are sitting there watching the The kids agreed computer. to forego skiing so you could get just a printer a, at a good price? No, just for a what? few minutes. Where did you get your kids? Because I can tell you that would not be happening in my house. <laughs> It was just for till the. Because it's so thrilling. It was. It was for us. Because you, you yeah, tell me that you, in your in your complaint, you actually use the phrase that this is thrilling and exciting and. Yeah. Go ahead, tell me about it. I want to hear somebody I, else's because for me, it's just stressful. To so me, I just it's wanted just, to. It was. It was fun till uh, till what happened afterwards. But during right. the time, we were very excited because. So, and so then, are, are you the guy who presses like one second before the time that I press? <laughs> and, I mean, one second after the time that I press, which is one second before the auction closes and then that's it? That's the big awe. Uh. That's you? <laughs> that's, that's, all right, go ahead. So we finally win it and it's... it's How much? Hundred and fifty seven fifty. Okay. So and you immediately pay on PayPal and then to your surprise, what happens? And then I immediately write him, because I saw he was in Brooklyn. It was a pickup. It wasn't a shipping. It was a pickup. So I'm excited again because I'm going to bring the kids. We're going to make a day of it and go to my mom in Brooklyn. Who's okay, you guys really need to go old. skiing. <laughs> okay, you do, it's good to go visit your mom, but then go skiing, you know? All right, go on. So I contacted him by email, and, and I basically said, very excited to, to get this printer, and I told him what it was for. And then I'm waiting and waiting for response, get no response. The next thing I know is... Bid canceled, money refunded to PayPal. Hmm. And my reaction is, no, you're not going to do this. So I immediately emailed him. And I, I, I basically said, um, we, what happened? Right. And he, what does he tell you? And I get no response. So on eBay, you could find out what the person's phone number is. So I called him on the phone. Do you do a lot of eBay? No, not that. Well, I, actually, I, I do, but not like, I don't contact sellers. No, I just meant, <laughs> do you buy a lot of things on eBay? Yeah, I buy and sell. Okay, you buy and sell? I don't sell that much. Okay, go ahead. Unfortunately, I buy more than I sell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have the, good, the, the wherewithal to do it, that's a good thing. Go ahead. Again, I consider it's, it's fun um, to an extent. Okay. So we, we finally uh, get, um, I get him on the phone. And I said, what happened? And he said, well, I have a kid. And uh, he put a toy, I don't know if it was a girl or a boy, but put a toy in it and broke the printer. So I'm, needless to say, I'm very disappointed. I'm like. You're probably also suspicious. I was suspicious. But can, on eBay, can you put a reserve? Yes, you okay. can. And, and there wasn't. There was no reserve. Or okay. buy it now. You could do all that. OK, go ahead. So that's why I was so excited, because I won. Right. You know, so what, so he said it's broken, and then you said. And so I didn't accuse him of anything. I just said, I have a business, and we have copy repair person that repairs printers and copiers, and he'll fix it. I don't okay. care. I'll take it. I'll take it and broken. And then he says. He said, you know, I have other printers that are fine. Um, I have a Toshiba, I have this and that. And I said, you know, I didn't research those. And he gives me a couple, I write them down. I look them up quickly on, on Google. Whatever. And they're like 10 years old, 12 years old. They're not the printer I bought, I'm not even close. One of them was a copy this machine. Printer, this printer was how old? This printer, I think three, four years old, maybe. Okay, so you call him back and you tell him, I don't want the other printers, I want this one, I'll, I'll still, I'll take it broken. And, and he, he says. The, he, he knew my number by then. And he, he what? Was, he knew my number so by then. So he blocked then. you? So, no, he wasn't returning, he wasn't he answering the phone. All right, like, so right did you call him from a different number? No, I should have. That, that's what people do. <laughs> All right, so what's going on? What's going on? The printer was damaged. My, my daughter put something in the paper tray that was, and the printer was damaged. Uh, how old's your daughter? Six. What did she put in the, what did a six-year-old put in the paper tray of you a printer pull. that you're selling and you have other printers? Why would your daughter be playing with your printer? Oh, this actually was on the floor in my basement. Uh -huh. I left it there. I was like, whatever. And so it was damaged. He called me up. I know where you live. I'm coming to pick it up. Do you do a lot of eBay? Um, not printers. 
Do you do like, a lot of eBay? A little bit. What's a little bit? How often do you Maybe do a few transactions a week. Oh, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, so you know the rules of eBay and all that. Yes. Okay, so could you have done a reserve on this one? I could have done a reserve. There was no reason for me to do a reserve. Okay, because you didn't care. Yeah. I'm okay. Happy to get so, rid of it. So, because because I, I have to take away from my head, or you have to persuade me to let go in yeah. my head of the idea that you were like, "Darn it, 157 is not enough for this one. I should have listed it higher." That's no, not what's going on. More than on. glad to get rid of it. All right. So you find out that the printer's broken seconds after he buys it. Once I saw it was sold, I was like, "Okay, let me go take a look at the printer. You know, make sure everything's good." And something was something was damaged with it. So jamming. why didn't you reach out to him and tell him, listen, there's a problem? Okay, is eBay, are the people on it generally on the up and up or is it questionable? Well, I think it's questionable. You have to make sure you check the reviews, make sure you have everything tight and understand what you're buying before you make the purchase. Fair point, but generally is it Safe? Not safe? Is it perilous? I think it's pretty safe. You just have to be careful. Like the guy was saying, you have to just read reviews and like make sure the buyer knows what they're talking about. Fair enough. What do you think? I think it's buyer beware. Um, it, it's one thing to, to go to a, an established brick and mortar uh, business. It's quite another when you're on the internet. It's true because you have no concept of what they've done before. That's correct. Got your point. Going inside the courtroom. You refunded him the money. That's how we found out there was a problem. What I'm saying is, wouldn't it be more polite to send the guy an email and say, listen, uh, you know, especially since he had just emailed you about how excited he was. You know, email him, listen, I just went down, I just tested it, and it's broken. Why, wouldn't that have been more polite? He Instead of him it. having to track you down, and then after the first phone call, you ignoring his phones? No, there was no, there was no, um, I, I, I saw the pay, payment. He won a payment right away, I can't, right, right, a few minutes later, checked it, canceled the payment once I realized I was paid. Okay. Um, before uh, any, I'm sorry. Say it again. Before any of the emails back and forth, before okay. the phone calls, he started calling me up. And I now know he we, says that he told you he'll just take it broken. I didn't want to sell it broken. Why? Because if the machine's not working, he's going to sue me for it. No, he's not. All you have to do is have him agree that he's taking it broken. How could he, he signs a release or he so, just... How hard is that? I mean, you know. To me, it sounds you, very fishy. He's like, I bought all the toner for it already. I'm going to fix it. I don't care what it is. I don't care. I'm like, why, well, why does that sound fishy? That's not the perfect. You can't sell that. And he wants to buy it broken. Do you still have it? Yes. Do you want to sell it broken if he signs a release that says that he will not sue you? If, uh, if he really wants it. <laughs> no, because <laughs> right, I mean, I, if you're a businessman, I'm just wondering if there's a reason why. Maybe you, ch I, 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 I mean, look, I don't know. You know, and I have another question, you know, because you, you, you. you you feel like you did nothing wrong, right? Absolutely. And uh, in fact, in your answer to the complaint, you, t t you talk about how, um, what if this were a sale of a house and I changed my mind? Well, it's a big difference of a sale of a house because the whole contract. It's the worst written. example you could have given right. because and if I was, <laughs> if I, I'm in contract to buy your house and you change your mind, I will sue you right. and you will pay me. That's how it works. So, it's, there. so in a, the normal world, that is contract uh, offer acceptance and that equals a contract. Is it different on eBay? I actually looked up the uh, the terms on eBay. Right. And the and term says I could cancel a, uh, a sale for 30 days. Ha hand it over. Let me see that. And are you familiar with that? Yes, Did you ever look it up afterwards, after I, no, the fact? No, no, I looked that up before. And this, why would that not apply? Because it's not real estate. There's two things. Real no, forget estate real estate. Is, <laughs> for, the, why would the terms of eBay not apply to your eBay transaction? Oh, the terms of eBay don't say that. You can cancel a transaction up to 30 days after the sale. Wait, keep going. Even if your buyer has already paid for the item. Keep going. You won't be able to cancel a transaction if the buyer has already opened an item item not received request, that means that you hadn't sent it, right? Dispute. And that didn't happen here. Or right. you've already opened an unpaid item case, which also didn't happen. What else did you want me to keep going at? There's, there's more terms. Okay, why don't you give me what you've got because there are no more terms here. It just tells you how to cancel the transaction. Right. Ah, don't worry about it. We'll let the buyer know. So apparently on planet eBay, it's not like it is in the rest of uh, contract law. But let's talk about something. The guy really wants it for $157, and it's trash to you. He was harassing me. I got uh, the last text message I sent him. I sent him back a text message. I know, because he thinks that you... I know, but, but I want you to do something for me yeah. a second. Imagine for a moment that you had a sale on eBay, and the guy just decided you know, to cancel it, and that wasn't fair to you, and you felt slighted. I would be upset. Right, that's what I'm saying. So, like, don't hold against him. Forget what you're holding against him because he was nasty because he, he was nasty because he was wrong, and he, but he thought he was right, and you were wrong, he, right? Because you're both honorable men. You're sitting there. Like, he says, I can't believe how dishonorable he is, and then it turns out, no, you're right within the rules. I agree with you. I'm just asking. 
Do you want to take the broken printer off your hands or don't you? It's $157. I felt something fishy about it. Say it again. I felt very fishy about it. No, why I know why you did it. I'm it. telling you, I'll draft the release. Yeah. Trust me, he cannot come yeah. back. Do you still want it or no? I do. You do? Okay, do you want to sell it to him at one point? I don't want to deal with him anymore. After getting phone calls at 1030 at night. Okay. All right. You know, you know maybe just, you're right. Maybe, maybe, maybe there was another reason that, you know, is, is foreign to me. But it doesn't matter because these are the rules of eBay. My, my verdict is for the defendant. Well, as you heard, he has a right to cancel. What are you going to do? Yeah, I don't think they have a right to cancel. They can cancel, but uh, only within eBay, they won't lose their account. So I think mm -hmm. it's still is within the New York jurisdiction. Right, right. So you don't believe you lost the case then? Well, I know I, know I lost the case. Yeah, because the, the judge ruled that he has a right to cancel. Right. So. I guess he does. As an interpretation through All the right. eBay rules. So why do you think he didn't sell you this one right now? Clearly because he, it was it was Here. too cheap. Oh, right now? Here in the courtroom when he had a no, chance, you said no you'd clue. take it. No clue. Because huh. right. he never wanted to sell it for that for that price. Okay. Around the corner this way, okay. All right, step on in here. You, you know, right here. Uh, well, you win the case. Uh, yeah. Why wouldn't you sell him the printer? I don't. After he was calling me up at 10:30 at night, harassing me for literally 24 hours. I well, that's because he didn't get the printer. But if you, I don't. Nine hundred dollars to sue me because I didn't give him a printer. I mean, I think that's. I'm scared he'll trip on my sidewalk and sue me. What do you think, Harvey? <laughs> okay, Kurt, uh, good lesson here. Uh, when you buy or sell on eBay, you gotta read the rules before you do it. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Donica Streeter. She says she had a direct TV dish installed on the roof and her landlord told her to take it down. Then the hothead went ahead and cut the wires himself and took the dish down. He never informed her she wouldn't be allowed to have a dish on the roof. Direct TV took a $440 disconnection fee out of her bank account and she's suing the defendant for that and $700 in emotional distress. This is the defendant, Paul Doran. He says the plaintiff moved into one of his apartments, didn't pay the first month's rent, but bought direct TV and a cat instead. The dish put holes in his roof he didn't authorize. The woman doesn't pay him rent and he wants her out. The fact that she brought him in here to court today is laughable and he thinks the judge is gonna agree and he'll walk out the winner. He's accused of dishing it to a tenant. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says her landlord demanded she take her direct TV All dish right. off the roof and People's then cut the wires. Session. But the, the defendant the says the plaintiff is a deadbeat who put holes in his roof. It's the forward. case of, I'll direct your TV I'm off my roof. Corn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, man. Okay. Oh, man, you got oh, no, yeah, you're, need you to, you're yeah, on up. Yeah. You're up. <laughs> Batter right up. Right there, there right Squeeze behind. Right Bang. Right. You're on the spotlight. There, there. you go. <laughs> You're the plaintiff, right? <laughs> yes, Okay. Donica Streeter? Yes, ma'am. You are suing Paul Doran, your landlord. Is she still living there? <gasps> yes. Okay, Paul Doran, your landlord, for $1,140. $440 of it, an early disconnect fee that you think you uh, ended up absorbing and you shouldn't have, and $700 for emotional distress because he took away your TV. Yes, what is going on? <laughs> well, Your Honor, I moved in. I brought um, my When TV. did you move in? I moved in the apartment in the ending of May. Like of around 2014? May. Yes. Okay. And um, I moved in after, I moved the little kitten in just for a few days for my son. He was there with me for like a few days out of the summer. And I had the kitten What's a few me. days out of summer? Like a week. She so you had a, a pet in there for a week? One week. Do, is there a lease? Yes. May I see the lease? I don't Are you have a lease. You don't have it? Do you have a lease? Uh, Nobody has a lease? It's kind of going to tell me the rules about whether she can have a pet or not. All right, go it, on. It's, it says no, no animals no to animals. stay. And I just had it there for my son. When I, I mean, the idea, yeah, it's the, the animals can't visit either. When, oh, you know. okay. <laughs> but let's talk about the satellite dish. What happened? Well, my associate, he gave me a refer friend for the satellite direct TV. As soon as I moved in the apartment, as soon as I got my tape television. Which Meaning I got, what, he gets $100 if you yes, sign up? Yes. Did he give so you a we, cut of it? We did that arrangement when he, he gave me the, he, you know, he came and called the direct TV people. 
and they didn't ask for any permission from him or from anyone to put this direct. Did to, you? I asked him if I could have it. And he didn't say, he said, I don't want it. Put it, pull it down. Wait, so, wait, 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 wait. Did you ask him if you could have it before you got it? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, the only reason I'm asking is because direct TV, unlike cable, you have to attach something to the roof, right? Mm -hmm. Or to yes. the side of the building, whatever. So you're, you know, you're, you, you are attaching something to somebody else's property because you're a renter. You're not an owner. Yeah. That's not my apartment. Right. I understood so that. So first you put it up mm -hmm. and then what happened? He got mad? Yes, he told me to pull it down, and I called DirecTV, and I told them the landlord does not want the satellite dish on the roof. Can y'all please relocate it or, or take it down? So they came to my apartment to try and relocate it, and they said that there was no place to relocate it. And by that time, he had went up on the roof and cut the wires himself, and that's exactly what the super uh, Giuliani, I believe his name is, the super that of his building that works in his building, told me. He said he watched him go on the roof, cut my satellite dish down, and put it in my living room without my permission of coming into my apartment. And that's what he did. Okay. Okay. So if I understand you correctly, mm -hmm. he took your trespassing dish off his roof. Okay. <laughs> right? So he trespassed okay. back into my apartment and re-trespassed, re gave okay. me back and my And he had asked you to take it down for how long at that point? He asked me to take it down for maybe like two weeks. And why hadn't it been down in those two weeks? I didn't know how to cut it. I wasn't going on the roof to remove it. No, but why hadn't you paid somebody to take it down or gotten DirecTV out there to take it down. I called DirecTV to come and take it down and asked them to, they just suspended the service. They didn't come and they told me that the satellite dish was mine and that they didn't come fast enough for Mr. Fast Pitt. enough? They weren't going to come at all. They oh. said the satellite dish was yours, you already paid for it, and tough. And then they charged you $440 for an early disconnect fee, which is what you're suing for. Yes, ma'am. And then the $700 of emotional distress is because? No television, just sitting in my room and watching a blank TV. Okay. All right. Can I hear from you, please? I have some pictures. Uh, the satellite dish is installed. Uh It was installed, it was an obstruction on the fire escape. It was sticking out two to three feet, blocking that, the fire escape. Was that the escape. second site? <laughs> or that was where she, they put That's the original, the original site. All right, it can't be on a fire escape. So the big dish, that's, that's a picture of just the handle, not the dish. Correct, that's just the base. Right, so there was a big it. dish blocking the fire escape? Yeah, yes. that's not gonna work. So you disconnected it, and then you put it in her apartment? No. You disconnected it, and? I went to her apartment, do repairs. I went outside. I had Mr. John Santiago with me, my witness. Come on up. And uh, disconnected the satellite dish. I handed it back to the window to him. He put it on the floor for her. She was there. She accepted the dish. We were done. Okay, so can a uh, tenant uh, put a direct TV dish on the roof, attach it to the roof without getting the landlord's prior consent? What do you think? Um, I say they should get consent. They should get yeah. consent. Do they have to get consent? I've yeah. I mean, well, like... But, uh, but it gets to, is a TV set so essential that you have a right to do that? I don't think so. The roof isn't your actual property. It's the property of the landowner, so you do have to get permission. What if the landlord says, no, you can't put that dish on my roof? Can you break the lease and say, hey, if I can't have TV, I'm out of here? Well, TV is a luxury, so you can. there's other forms of television. It's not a necessity? No, it's not. Oh, my God. <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. So tell me again why you think he needs to pay you $440 of your early disconnect fee when you went forward and ordered direct TV without having a plan? Because you can't attach it to the fire escape. That's against the law. And that'll give him building and zoning violations, you know, and incur fines for him. It's completely legal. You can't do that. And so you were precipitous. Like, you jumped the gun to try to get the direct TV without knowing whether you could attach that thing. It seems to be entirely your fault. So why would he have to pay you $440? And why don't you just get cable like everybody else? Why do you have $700 in emotional distress? Why are you staring at a blank wall? What is it that uh, everybody else in that building does? They have cable TV or uh, whatever yeah. else they have. Yeah. I was told by Mr. Giuliani that it was not blocking the, the um, fire escape and that it was okay where it was located. Um, did you tell her that it was okay? I did not. I did not. Did you I ever tell her, yeah, that's fine? No, I told her she wasn't supposed to have a dish because all the apartments are cable ready. Right. They got the wires already installed. 
You don't need to put a satellite on the on roof. Unless you're trying to get that $100 refer a friend thing, but this turned out to be kind of expensive. Uh, based on everything that I've listened to, my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on both sides. So the bad news comes in for you. Here's the plaintiff right here. Step over, turn around here, and um, tell us what you think about the outcome here. Come on up a little bit. I yeah. believe that people should not be able to enter your apartment without your permission, and you shouldn't be able to attach things to other people's property with permission. So the judge's decision was fair. Okay, okay. Um, you got this now, and what, what, happened, what becomes of this? What are you doing <laughs> with this no now? Clue what I, to I do got with this that. for a housewarming gift for her. You know, uh -huh. when we, I took her out to lunch. When we came back, we found this in the middle of the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you got, what are you going to do with it now? Uh, centerpiece? <laughs> I don't know. What? Uh, your guess is as good as Sir spaghetti. And <laughs> <laughs> you got any better ideas? I have no clue okay. what to do with that. All right, all right. Head around the corner this way, yeah. All right, so step on in here. Well, how, how do you, uh, why did this happen? She step didn't know, she didn't listen to me. Oh. That's why. Mm-hmm. She she thinks she can do whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Landlord. All right. Harvey. Okay, Kurt, you know, this is a really big issue with landlords and tenants, especially when a tenant moves out and the landlord keeps security. You are not allowed to attach a fixture to uh, the landlord's property without getting that landlord's consent, either in the lease or otherwise. Uh, and a fixture is something generally that is attached to the property and would cause damage if at some point it's removed.